Prosecutors in the Alec Baldwin trial are calling more witnesses to the stand today. Baldwin is charged with involuntary manslaughter in the fatal onset shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Yesterday, each side presented opening statements and first responders testified, describing a chaotic scene on the movie set. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins me now from Santa Fe, New Mexico, along with entertainment attorney Lisa Bonner for more on this. Uh, Jacqueline, what do we know about uh, what will happen in court today and who's taking the stand? Diane, so the second day just kicked off. We are currently watching the defense cross-examine Marissa Popple. She is the crime scene technician who responded the day of the shooting. And what we're seeing unfold right now as we speak is the, the defense is asking her to clarify some of the semantics that she had said yes, in yesterday's testimony when she was speaking with the prosecution in regards to the condition of the gun used in the shooting. So she was saying yesterday that the gun, after the FBI testing, it was uh, broken. But now what the defense is doing is is there they're trying to clarify, was it destroyed or was it broken? Um, and now what we're seeing them talk about is the uh, different ammunition that she found on set, whether it was live rounds, dummy rounds, and more of the specific and specifics in regards to that evidence found on the scene, Diane. Lisa, the state claimed in opening statements that Baldwin repeatedly violated firearm safety standards on set. They also say he pulled the trigger, which he denies. The defense is saying Alec Baldwin was just doing his job as an actor and that it was this responsibility of the armorer and the assistant director to make sure the gun was safe. How high is the challenge here for the prosecution to try to prove beyond reasonable doubt that he's guilty of involuntary manslaughter here? Well, that's a good question. You have what we would say dueling nar narratives because the state is saying that you have to prove that he had a reckless disregard to safety by not adhering to these safety protocols and and firing the gun. But the the defense is saying that, listen, even if all that is true, even if he did pull the trigger, that does not it, in make him guilty, make him guilty of involuntary manslaughter. He was acting. He was acting in his role, which was to act, to choreograph, to mimic real life. His job does not is not to check the gun for the live rounds. And that really presents, you know, a dueling narrative between the prosecution and the defense. And really, it's going to come down to what the jury believes and uh, and whether they're going to stand behind what SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, says. No, it is not the, the actor's job to say, to check the gun each and every time. That is the job of the, the assistant, first assistant director and the armorer. So, Lisa, what kind of precedent could a case like this set, and how could a guilty verdict affect the standards of the film industry? Well, a guilty verdict could really send ripples across the film industry because, again, as I mentioned, SAG is basically saying, no, this is not the actor's responsibility, and they are siding with Alec Baldwin. And so you would have to really, each and every time that a you are rehearsing or you are filming, that would put the onus squarely on the actor to really open the gun, check, and use the... Um, real life standard of, you know, checking to make sure that there are no live rounds, which really would impair the the timing of uh, of the film and also in affect, you know, whether or not he's doing his job correctly, because his job is to act. That is what they are saying. So it really could really affect and, and change the role of actors in the film industry. And Jacqueline, the prosecution is expected to call Hannah Gutierrez Reed to testify tomorrow. She was the armor on set. She's already been convicted of involuntary manslaughter for Helena Hutchins' death. What are you watching for as she takes the stand? Look, I mean, Diane, this is a big deal, right? I mean, the defense is trying to put the blame on her because she was the armor on set. It was her responsibility to make sure that the firearm safety was paramount uh, during shooting, and clearly that did not happen. But the biggest thing here is, number one, I mean, she's already been convicted. She's already received the maximum time in prison. So what benefit does she have to, to speaking on the stand because she is appealing the conviction? And the judge in this case also ruled she will not receive immunity for testifying. So ultimately, we are expecting her to invoke her Fifth Amendment right, but we will see what happens, Diane. Jacqueline Lee, Lisa Bonner, thank you.